guys welcome back to my channel my name is Tracy and today's fun video tutorial is this card here look at it isn't it gorgeous it's using the new celebrate sunflowers bundle it's in the new annual catalog let's get started <laughs> All the products I'm using on today's card can be seen on the screen here. Head over to my blog for all the measurements and supplies. You can see that blog post in the description of this video. Using Celebrate Sunflowers bundle in this pop-up card and it's such a wonderful set. There is lots and lots of layers to this card. The first one being the Thick Whisper White card base. Then the next layer is the Shaded Spruce. Now it has a little bit of a nice white border all the way around. We're using Shaded Spruce ink and we're going to do a little bit of random stamping around the edges using that two leaf stamp. So I'm just randomly all the way around. I don't need it in the middle. Um, we've got another piece that's going to go over the top. We're just creating that little bit of extra border around, around the card. The next layer is a thick whisper white cardstock and that gorgeous designer series paper. This is called Flowers for Every Season. It's in the new annual catalogue, the same as this gorgeous sunflower, celebrate sunflower bundle. So that's our first layers of our card. It's actually quite a thick uh, layered card, um, but it keeps it all together because it has so many layers. So I'm just gluing this designer series paper inside the Whisper White piece. And as you can see, i am put uh, multi-purpose glue on both sides of the designer series paper, popped it in, and then just closed the card front up. That glued it in perfectly. This one I'm doing a little bit different. I've put some multi-purpose glue on one side of the card and then closed it, popped some more on the other side. I don't know which one worked better, but I did try two different ways. So now we're going to glue this um, design series paper and whisper white inside so we've got the four layers all glued in together it is quite thick so I did run the bone folder down just to make sure that um, it folded really well we have two pieces of shaded spruce cardstock here. This creates um, one of the folds inside as well as um, the curved fold for the uh, picket fence. This is the curved piece that I've just scored half inch on either side. This one here that we're working on now is the pop-up part in the middle and it measures five and a half by one and a half inches and we're going to score at two and a half in the middle and then half an inch on each side so just folding it using the bone folder to make nice crisp edges same with our curved piece so working on our curved piece I'm going to bring in and um, we're going to create this gorgeous fence now I've gone through my scrap bag and I've found two pieces of Whisper White cardstock that are going to be our railings. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of that multi-purpose glue over and create that railing effect. I just thought that that really um, just made it a really nice looking fence with the railings showing up from underneath. So I've gone a little bit over so I'm just going to chop off that excess with my paper snips. The picket fences palings have been made with Whisper White cardstock and the classic label punch. So I'm just showing you here, I've already um, created quite a few, but punched one. So I'm just chopping off the bottom of that punch piece to create the palings. The fence comes together really quickly just by gluing all those palings down and who doesn't love a picket fence? It's so beautiful. Next up are the sunflowers. I need 12 for the card here that we're using today. I've done 11, but let's stamp that um, sunflower down in Memento Tuxedo Black Ink. And we're going to be colouring them in with the stamping blends. Now, so anyone who has OCD out there, I apologise that I've stamped in a completely different way. And I hope it's not annoying too much for you all. So using the dark stamping blend in the soft suede, I've just done the outline and around the middle colouring it in with the light and then I'm going to bring the dark 
soft suede back in just for a few of those little speckles in the middle. Moving on to the shaded spruce, we're creating some vein areas in the leaves with the dark shaded spruce and then I'm just going to colour it in with the light. Um, not a lot of shading going on, it's pretty much straight colouring here. So I'm using three of the colours for the um, sunflower. We're starting off with the dark mango melody. This is the darkest of the shades. I'm going right around the centre and just bringing that colour out a little bit into the flower. Then coming in with the light mango melody, just bringing that colour further out towards the edges. Lastly, we're using the light, uh, sorry, the dark daffodil delight to fully colour it in. And I've left a little bit of white space um, on that flower just for a little bit of extra depth. For our centres, I'm going to bring in the Winker Stella pen and this just creates some wonderful sparkle and shine. And we're using the die to cut those out with the die cut machine. So we have all 12 ready to go. I'm using the well written dies for three of those butterflies in the bumblebee card. I've also got some scraps in shaded spruce for our stems of our flowers. Now I'm going to put that middle piece in first and I did find an easy way to do this. We're going to pop some tear and tape on the tabs. And then I'll show you a quick and easy way to make sure that um, it goes inside the card really well, but you can still close the card. So our centre score line in this piece, we're going to line up with the centre of our card. I'm just trying to work out where the picket fence goes to where this is, this centre piece is going to go. And I could have put it down just that little bit uh, further down. Um, that would have worked. So I've lined up the centre score line and then just adhered all of it down so it pops out the other way as we can see but it does pop down and sit nice and flush. Moving on to our stems and our sunflowers I'm just going to adhere these down with tear and tape and I'm doing that to every single one. Now I wasn't sure of where I wanted to place them all so the stems are at different lengths and I'm just going to cut them off where I need to cut them off as I put the card together. Now everything that I'm using today on this card you can purchase in my online store. Um, head over to my online store. Please use the hostess code for the month and you will get some really great um, bargains for shopping through me. Um, the online store, sorry, the hostess code can be found in the description of this video and it's also found on my blog. So I'm just popping up these two flowers on the very back with some dimensionals and as you can see these um, stems are quite long. I'm just going to chop off where I need them. Now on this card I have three in that pop-up piece but I'm only going to put two on this one and I'll show you why. It's all about um, making sure that everything is even. The great thing about this is you can pop your sunflowers anywhere you like on this card. Um, it just depends on, on your preference. So I've on this card here, I've got two at the back, two in the middle, whereas I've done three for my sample card. So I'm bringing the fence in now, and it's easier to work out the placement of your sunflowers um, with the fence sort of popped up on the card. So I'll show you in a minute. I'm going to temporary pop it down on the card using some temporary adhesive. This is um, not stamping up product, um, but you can get it in scrapbooking stores and craft stores. And I'm just going to temporary adhere it down on the card and it gives us that nice curved image. And that's just gonna be able to help me with the placement of the sunflowers. As you can see, I can move a little bit faster now, um, getting them all in the right spot. Once I'm happy with it, I'm going to take it off the card and using some tear and tape to secure all the stems down properly. And I've made sure that they're very secure. That adhesive on the side there, I'm just taking off with my fingers and I'm going to pop some tear and tape down um, once I've taken off all the rest of the excess stems here. 
tear and tape is a great adhesive, especially for pop-up cards and um, projects. Uh, really has a great hold. Just popping a little bit on each of the tabs. And this is nearly all the card done. We're just going to move on with the sentiment next. And I've used the uh, well-written framelit dies for our sentiment. I've gone with happy birthday because I think that's a nice, bright, fun card. And everyone needs a bright, fun card for their birthday. So I've already die cut with the shaded spruce cardstock the happy birthday being careful to pull them out from the die. And I'm doing a bit of a layering effect. Now this was shown by an artisan team member, I believe it was Rochelle Block, where you use the dies to create a mat. So I've just gone around with a pencil and now I'm going to take my paper snips and do some a little bit of fussy cutting. Now there was a little bit of that pencil still there, so I'm just using my eraser to get rid of any of um, that pencil mark. I'm gluing these two together with some Tombow Mono Multi-Purpose Glue. Liquid adhesive is really good. You could also use adhesive sheets uh, before you die cut out. That would work as well. I'm popping the sentiments up with some dimensionals and I've used the mini dimensionals to pop these up just because it's a smaller sentiment piece. I've used lots because I want to make sure that it adheres really well and stays well popped up. You can please yourself if you don't like using so many. Um, I seem to buy a lot and I use a lot. So using the glue dots for our beautiful little butterflies there, I'm just going to roll a glue dot up so it's nice and small and I'm putting it on the back of the butterfly in the body area. Now by doing the rolling of the uh, glue dots it also gives it a little bit of extra dimension. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed today's video tutorial. If you have, please give me a thumbs up and I'd love if you left me a comment. I'm actually taking part in a blog hop today. So if you head over to my blog, you can see the links to the other blog posts in the description. Um, I'll be back with another video very soon. So hopefully you can join me. Until then, have a wonderful day. Bye bye. <laughs>